Hi Scorpio, welcome to your February 2018 love reading. It's Rena here. So, just shuffling the cards. Okay, interesting. So the overall message, or <laughs> the overall message, the overall theme is the Knight of Wands. And I actually got this guy in a different position for another sign. And this is the card of the um, person who is the good time Charlie, the one that you have uh, a fling with, but you fall in love with them and they disappear. And I think it was Aquarius. Yeah, I think that was who I got, I think. But anyway, Scorpio can definitely um, find this person, uh, you know, easily because uh, by the way this the the person's astrological sign could be Sagittarius but I I uh, am much more resonating with the idea that this is uh, Aries the other fire sign if you just want to make it more broad could be uh, Leo and that's definitely a sign that that Scorpios tend to become attracted to. But in terms of this quality of the Knight of Wands, it's actually, I would say, associated with signs like, particularly, like Aries and Sagittarius and Gemini and what other signs? Sometimes even Pisces people, if we're not looking at the, we're not looking at the, what the card is connected to, but just the, the actual behavior, the bad behavior, I would say those signs are non-committal types of signs, you know, the, the kind of um, men, because this is going to be a male energy, that have a hard time settling down doesn't mean that they will never settle down you know the the idea of the knight is that it is different than the king it's not mature so other than probably well the the knight of cups is romantic and the knight of pentacles is hard working so those two are probably your better bets but how do you order up a Knight of Pentacles in a catalog or something. You can't do that. So basically, um, when you meet a certain type of person, it's you who's attracted to those qualities, whether you realize it or not. You may not think that the person's a womanizer, but you will probably become very uh, excited by the chase, the thrill of the chase, they call it. And one thing about Scorpio is that it's ruled by two planets. Pluto, everybody figures out, they know that, but also Mars. What other sign is ruled by Mars? Aries. And so you have that in common with Aries, I think where Scorpios love a good challenge. Although, obviously, 
um, Scorpios also have a tendency to get very, um, like, uh, I was going to say paranoid if the other party is not uh, committing because you wonder what are they doing, who are they with. So it's not that you enjoy constantly chasing, but if the person is too easily available at first, you might not value that person's um, offer of love or companionship. And then there's the sex part of this, because the, the Knight of Wands is very sexy. And they, they make love fun. I think I'm quoting a Fleetwood Mac song. But they really are the kind of um, people that um, make your life more colorful. And that is part of the draw. However, it's followed by heartbreak because when you fall for them, they do their disappearing act. So this is the centerpiece of what we're talking about here. Now, you know, it seems to me uh, sometimes when I do these readings that I'm repeating myself because we have some of the same situations always coming up time and time again and yet we have different permutations so in this particular reading we have in the past position the six of cups now this kind of changes things if I you know I'm just I don't like study these cards um, before I start opening my mouth. I just start opening my mouth. So if I see this uh, Six of Cups in the past position, I might even think that Knight of Wands is you, that you were with your soulmate, and uh, something happened. Maybe you, or, you know, soulmate, or the person that you loved from the past, and now, because you don't have that relationship, you're just saying to hell with it and just trying to be uh, this person that, that can just uh, love them and leave them and stuff like that. But that's not what a Scorpio person is. A Scorpio person can't, can't really um, truly be that type of person. There are other signs that are more capable of it. But usually... A Scorpio person is going to be uh, very committed to a partner and it's very hard for them to be uh, even promiscuous or um, dating around because you have such particular uh, specifications. You, you know, you're very extreme in your emotions of like and dislike. So some people, they can hang with different types of people and uh, date different types of people, and it's kind of stimulating for them. I don't think so for, for Scorpios. I think that it might even be a bit stressful. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that some of you may be kind of, um, what would we call, acting out because of a love that really uh, was near and dear to your heart that somehow that got uh, broken up or maybe even uh, the death of, of someone that you loved. I mean, that's not going to obviously be everyone, but um, if you were with somebody for a long time and um, now you feel like I'm, uh, you know, on my own, so I'm not going to, it might even be like a, a defense mechanism to avoid getting too close to someone, but it's playing with fire for Scorpios because emotionally it's something that is very hard. For those people who are dealing with this Knight of Wands, um, You may have thought that this person was 
the love of your life. And you may have not realized that it was a one-sided thing, that the other person did not have the same intentions as you did. I think I got that also in the other reading. Uh, and that, you know, that's another thing that happens very often. So what do we have right now? We have um, the Hermit card. And that means soul searching. That means kind of spending time alone. And of course, Scorpios, you usually like to spend time alone already. And you're very deep people. This card connects to Virgo, so that could be somebody who's come into the picture. But, um, by the way, you know, because this does seem to be more for a um, uh, people that are in relationships. So I think I might be doing single readings this month again, uh, towards the end of the month, possibly. So stay tuned for that. We'll see how my schedule goes with all my uh, videos. So anyway, um, you may have seen that there's limitations in this relationship. And so you're kind of keeping your distance. Maybe you're um, seeing this person less frequently or just deciding to stay away because you know that it's going to hurt you. Because we have as the, as the higher message, the spiritual message, the Ace of Swords. And this is a card of, you know, seeing things as they really are. It's also a card of victory, and I think that that is the victory, is that um, when people are out of denial, they can really make great changes in their life. And this is a card of new beginnings, too. But it's, you know, the swords relate to thought, communication. And this card connects with somebody who is seeing life in a very clear way. It's like a moment of clarity. And so it's, you know, it's like their life is not clouded over with fantasy. And even though it may kind of hurt a little bit because you may have thought you were with your soulmate and you thought this was the person for you, it's better to um, be honest with yourself if this is the case. What crosses you is the Six of Pentacles. Now, this is interesting because the Six of Pentacles is getting what you are worth. And you see the scale, so it's like um, a mutual situation. And basically, I think one takeaway from the Six of Pentacles is the idea that, you know, in these types of scenarios, is from the very beginning kind of observing the other person and how do they interact with you? Do they seem interested in what you have to say? Do they call you back? Is there like a mutual back and forth, like a ping pong ball, where you're, um, you call them, they call you, or are you the one calling all the time? Um, you know, th there again, um, that can lead to obsession. You know, Scorpios are associated with obsessive uh, behavior, and I would say especially in love matters. But a lot of times it's easy to get into those obsessive patterns when someone is being elusive. That makes the other person want to know what's going on, where are they, what are they doing. And uh, it's... Um, It's, it's very interesting because, yeah, I was just thinking about something that was really funny. When I first met my partner, and this is like 
this is like 35 years ago. But anyway, I, I called uh, his place on a Saturday night and he didn't answer. And uh, by the way, he has Venus in Scorpio as well as Saturn in Scorpio. And, uh, <laughs> and he didn't answer the phone on purpose because he wanted to uh, make me think that I, he could be out doing something on a Saturday night. And I, I remember thinking, that just drove me crazy. And I'm, I'm not a Scorpio, but it just drove me crazy. I have the sun in the eighth house. So that's like, you know, having the sun in Scorpio, I guess. And I was just like, what is he doing, you know? And he always laughs at that because he, you know, being a Scorpio, he was playing, playing a few, you know, having Venus in Scorpio. Um, he was playing a few games with me because he wanted to... Uh, you know, give out this idea that he was not necessarily just sitting at home on a Saturday night. And so suffice it to say, it worked. And I said to him, that's not very honest. And he said, all's fair in love and war. So, <laughs> but um, anyway, so uh, that's what I would say that card represents is, you know, do you tend to be the one that puts too much effort into things and doesn't get it back. And instead of like, like the hermit, like looking at yourself at that point and assessing the situation, do you just like go right into that uh, detective mode? What is he doing? Where is he? Um, and I'm saying he because of the average person who's watching it. There's no sexism meant whatsoever. And it, it could be um, either gender, obviously. But with the court cards, I usually like assign it to whatever the gender is. And uh, so balance, uh, the, the six of pentacles in reverse is like about not um, heeding that having, you know, no sense of what is balanced in this relationship. It's not give and take. One person may be doing all the taking, one person may be doing all the giving, and therefore the relationship is not sound. What is coming in is a ten of um, swords. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to get betrayed by this person. This may mean that you are realizing that it's over with. The number 10 is the end of a cycle. And it may just be that you have to come to terms with this being really over and make peace with it. I think that more people than not probably uh, may still be clinging to some hope that they can salvage a relationship with somebody who's not committing to them. But if you really like dig deep into your heart, you, you will know whether or not this is a good relationship, a healthy relationship to be in. The outcome is the moon card. Now, the moon card can indicate timing of when... It, because the, the moon can, can be a time when things are revealed, when the secret is revealed. So, um, I'm trying to think in the month of... We'll see, January 31st, we have that. That'll be your fourth house. Okay, so... Hmm, let me think. Pisces. Yeah, maybe it won't be until March. March 1st is the full moon in Pisces. And that is your fifth house of romance. 
So that might be the time when everything is brought out into the open. The moon can indicate that you're being given half-truths. As an outcome card, it can be that you are um, seeing things, you know, more, things are illuminated more, or that some people, it's that they are living in that fantasy. Now, typically with an outcome, uh, unless the person refuses to grow and to change, it won't be that outcome because that outcome is for people who are living in denial. But for people who are willing to accept that they have been deceived, this can be a card of great intuition and a spiritual peace, you know, that you, it's right underneath the, the hermit card, that you are kind of relying on yourself to find peace. You're not looking um, for it through another human being. There's nothing wrong with loving a person and seeking comfort from a person, but as we both know, there are a lot of people who become overly dependent on a romantic partner to fill so much of that void. And it just doesn't work that way. Another person cannot be a substitute for your own um, sense of self and, you know, and sense of self-esteem. And actually, these types of relationships erode self-esteem. The, also, the outcome could be a relationship with either a Cancer or a Pisces individual. You know, specifically, or somebody who's very Piscean or Cancerian. So, typically like a water sign who's very intuitive. Okay, Scorpio. Well... That's that, and if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Otherwise, have an awesome month of February. Bye.